What's up everybody? I'm Aaron and this is Talking Points. So what's up everybody? And welcome back to another exciting episode of Talking Points here on Triforce of Chaos. As always, we always start the week off with talking points, just kind of recap you of what happened, give you some information out there that might be fun for you, and uh, give you something to talk about. So uh, on today's episode, I'll be going over last week's Let's Plays, I'll open a new set item that will improve the set by leaps and bounds. Also, I'll talk about this week's Mobile Game Madness Game of the Week, which is very constructive as well as destructive, but mostly constructive. And uh, finally, I'll round out this week's episode with uh, the namesake of the show, our talking points. Of course, everybody seems to, it seems to be picking up a little more. We're getting a lot more answers as we go along. So uh, now that all that's said and done, let's get talking. So uh, last week, Josh and myself started off the week with uh, taking on Andros in the medium run of Star Fox 64. That was by far not as challenging as a medium run sounds. I mean, it, Josh handled it pretty well. And I commentated pretty well. Yeah. I don't do old the older games too well anymore. Once we defeated him, we took on the hard run and defeated that with... Well, Josh took on the hard run and defeated that with no issues. I commentated. Again, no issues. And finally, we followed the hard run you know, with a demonstration of all the alternate routes and an alternate ending to show off, show off what exactly happens if you were unable to protect Great Fox. It was kind of funny to me. I laughed. I, I don't know. I, I just laughed at the way the ship kind of tilted. So anyway, we rounded out our Let's Plays with me continuing through the first chapter of Super Meat Boy and getting even closer to facing off against the first boss of the game. Uh, mind you, Chapter 1 was very fun for me. I enjoyed every minute of that. It, I mean, the game is tough, but, you know, and I do rage a lot in that game, so keep watching to see how well I'm going to do this week coming up. So anyway, that does it for the recap. Let's move on to our new set item for the this week. And the set item is the Mario 30th Anniversary Edition Amiibo. I found this the other day while doing some uh, Christmas shopping. And I thought it was perfect since I have very little Nintendo items on the set. I mean, I've got this, Link, and uh, Link. Yeah, so obviously you can tell what I, obviously you can tell who I'm partial to in Nintendo. But anyway, this 8-bit Mario Amiibo, you know, it seems pretty cool. Uh, I'll open it the rest of the way later. But anyway, it comes with, you know, well... You know, it's, yeah, I'll open it later. As you can see, okay, I hope I didn't break anything there. No, I didn't break anything, but he comes with, he comes out of a pipe. So anyway, that's it for the set item. I really didn't have much to buy. I really didn't buy much for the set. So anyway, we'll move on to this week's Mobile Game Madness Game of the Week now that I've finished that, which is uh, Hammer's Quest by or Oridio. Oridio, yeah, I was having a hard time saying that. Hammer's Quest is about a boy who goes on a quest to find his father, who went on a quest to fight evil with the family sword. So now he's stuck with a hammer. The game actually is kind of fun and simple. The mechanics are very simple. I mean, pretty much the character moves on his own. All you have to do is hold down to attack. And that, by holding down, you just tap the screen. You can tap the screen once, or you can hold down on the screen. And it'll um, it'll do the attack, which holding down gives you a charged attack versus tapping, which gives you a light tap. It can be challenging at first because it's timed, so you really have to make sure you time your taps correctly to kill all the enemies. But uh, once you beat the level, you gain coins, which you use to level up your character skills, which in return make the game a little easier. I mean, it's a very simple game, and, the, and it's fun, awesome, and it's great for everybody. So, with that being said, I mean, 
I'm not going to give it a long review here, but, you know, it's a fun time waster, and I'll give it a 5 out of 5. This game is just pure fun, and it's easy to play. I mean, anybody can play it. So if you want to check it out, you can check it out on the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. It's well worth getting. I mean, it's a good time waster, and it's good for if you have little kids that need something to do to keep their time, keep themselves moving, or keep themselves occupied while you're going somewhere or doing something. So now let's move on to the talking points segment of the show. Last week, I asked you what video game was the biggest disappointment for you. For our answers, we have, or for our fancers, we have Joey who writes, Diablo 3, it really sold out on what made 1 and 2 great. Taylor writes, Borderlands, the pre-sequel. Travis writes, Star Wars Battlefront, which he's talking about the new Star Wars Battlefront. I've had a lot of people complain about it. It, I like it. I've played it. In fact, I spent most of my weekend playing that and Destiny, so, yeah. Nicole writes, Elder Scrolls Online. Jacob writes, I'll second that motion with Nicole and uh, Elder Scrolls Online. It was unexpectedly shitty. Will writes, I thought about it for a bit, and now I'd say Call of Duty Ghosts. Yeah, I played that with a few people, and it just, it wasn't, it, it was what ruined Call of Duty for me to where I don't play anymore. Uh, for our team answers, mine last week was Lair, and Josh says Sonic Unleashed. I just couldn't get in that whole werehog transformation thing. Granted, the werehog levels were fun. I don't feel like they belonged in a Sonic game, though. Thanks, Josh. And uh, thanks, everyone, for answering last week's question. Uh, as for this week, I'll go ahead and ask you this question that I've been wanting to ask for a long time and just keep forgetting it and having to write another one. But it's, uh, what is the weirdest video game you have ever played? For me, I gotta go with one that I, that I really talked about a couple of weeks back, which was uh, Tokyo Jungle on the PS3. If you've ever played the game, you can tell it's a Japanese game just by the way it was made. I mean, just by the way it acts. But in the game, you basically play as this Pomeranian that goes through... You start off as a Pomeranian. You can play as other animals later, but you go through post-apocalyptic Tokyo, which is now full of all the animals from a local zoo or... Who knows but how they got there. I mean, it just gets weirder. You control the animals once you unlock them. Or you control other animals once you unlock them. I think I've already said that. But you go around as an animal marking your territory by pissing, of course. Uh, breeding. Yeah. yeah. You do have to find a mate and breed. And it kind of gets into a little detail. Not much. But you also have to go out and hunt. So as a Pomeranian, you can take down anything as long as you're carnivorous. And that goes, and I mean anything, like cats, chickens, dogs, big dogs, elephants, tigers, lions, as long as your pack's pretty strong. Yeah. And there's even prehistoric animals and robots which you can download as expansion packs. I mean, this game is an English port of a Japanese game, for crying out loud. So, if you've ever seen Japanese games that were kind of made for arcades... It, that's what it is. It's an arcade game. I mean, so it's a Japanese arcade game. So, I mean, we know they're out there with their arcade games. So, anyway, if you want to comment on this or if you want to let us know what your answer is for this week's Talking Point, you can do so in the comments below or on the Facebook and Twitter pages. Also, that concludes today's episode. Make sure you uh, stay tuned for more videos as they come along. And remember, just keep talking. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you want to see another video, you can click on this link right here. See what I did there? Link. Uh, you probably can't see them now. Or if you want to subscribe, you can click on this link here. If you're Santa Claus, I really want a Buster Sword replica, a Gunblade replica, a kick-ass ninja outfit, and a boss-ass computer. I've been a good boy this year. I promise.